All right, here's the review for this unit. What we've got going on here on this first problem is solving the equation. I'm actually going to do this a way that I didn't do too much in class, where I actually factor this at first. And so this would factor to x minus 4 times x plus 2 equals 0. Um, just to remind you of how you can use factoring, that is because negative 4 times 2 would be negative 8, and negative 4 plus 2 would be negative 2. So this actually checks out. Now, if, and on your test, you're going to have some problems where it's already factored. So when it is factored, <clears throat> you go ahead and set each factor equal to zero. So x minus four should equal zero, or x plus two will equal zero. And that's by the zero product property that I just used. So on this linear equation, now I'm just going to add four to get x equal to four, or my other answer is going to come from subtracting 2. x is equal to negative 2. There's my two answers. Now, that's not the only way you could have gotten those two answers. You could have also been using your calculator. So if I grab my calculator and at the beginning it's already set equal to 0. I'm going to slide this camera over. And I could actually just type in to my calculator x squared minus 2x minus 8. And this is what I've been really encouraging you to do is to just use the calculator to get the answers of negative 2 and positive 4 by looking at what are called the zeros of the related function. Now factoring is going to be a part of your test. It is multiple choice so there are usually workarounds involved with that and we're going to talk about how you can use your calculator to check your answers. Now in this problem, I'm looking at 15x squared, I'm looking at minus 10x. I'm going to identify that 5 is a factor of both of these and it's actually the greatest common factor that they have. But x is also a common factor, so 5x is truly my greatest common factor. Now I'm going to divide that out of each term. So i um, just going to kind of do my work out to the side here. Whenever I do 15x squared and divide it by my greatest common factor, 5x, 15 divided by 5 is 3, x squared divided by x is x to the first power. So 3x is what belongs in the, x, in the parentheses. That is so that when I do 5x times 3x, I would get 15x squared. Now the negative 10x, when I divide it by 5x, negative 10 divided by 5 is negative 2, x divided by x cancels, so minus 2 is my other term of this binomial. Alright, going to remind you really quick about how we were able to check our answers. So if the test is a multiple choice test item, you can actually use your calculator to kind of get around that. So type in your original of expression, 15x squared minus 10. X. I forgot that. All right, and then tap into your second and third blocks and type in your linear factors that you found here. So I found 5x as a linear factor. And what happens is that line actually intersects at the same place on the x-axis as the, as the original function did. And if I type in my other linear factor, the 3x minus 2, it hits at the other zero. So that way we get both of them there. All right, this is how you can kind of check to see if it's the true linear factors or not, to see if they intersect at the right spot. But this is really what you should know how to do, which is work by hand. All right, this is uh, example three of your review. Now, what's going to happen here is I'm going to factor this by doing A times C, which is 1 times 30, and that's equal to positive 30. Then I write down all the values that multiply to positive 30. 1 times 30, 2 times 15, uh, 3 times 10, 4 doesn't go into it, 5 goes into it 6 times, but then there's also the negative times a negative. Okay. Now, the correct pair that I would want to use on this one is the negative 3 times negative 10, and that is because that is what adds to negative 13. 
So I'm going to write this out as x squared minus 3x minus 10x plus 30 from the original expression. This is where we had two groups now that we factor one at a time. My first group is here. My GCF for x squared minus 3x is x. It would multiply x minus 3. That is from the same process I did on the previous example. For my second group, my GCF will be negative 10. I'm using a negative because of the lead sign. Negative 10x divided by negative 10 is positive 1x. 30 divided by negative 10 is negative 3. And my factor matched there, x minus 3, that's one of my two factors. The factor it had been distributed to is x minus 10. Now, if that didn't make sense to you, let's at least know how to check our answers. Because if it's multiple choice, which a lot of questions will be tomorrow on your test, then what you can do is actually check the original expression compared to the final. So, x squared minus 13x plus 30 was my original. I'm going to have to zoom out here. There's my parabola. It has x-intercepts here at 10 and 3, which actually lines up with these factors pretty well. So what I'll do, though, is type in to the second block one of my linear factors, x minus 10. And when I do that, that line it intersects at the same zero as the parabola did, right there. Now I'm going to type in the third block the other linear factor, the x minus 3. And lo and behold, it actually hits at the same zero. If it did not, say you got x minus 5, you would know that something's wrong about this factor. If this was multiple choice and this was one of my multiple choices, I would cross it off the list. But we had it right. This is a good final answer. All right, so on this problem, it says factor the expression by grouping. That's actually what we just did. So we again do a times c. a is 3, c is negative 7, so that's negative 21. And I write down all the things that can possibly multiply to negative 21. Like negative 1 times 21, negative 3 times 7, that's actually it. Well, you could have the negative on the other value. So from this list, I would be choosing to add up to positive 20, negative 1 plus 21 is what I'm going to use. And that's going to show me how to split the middle term there. So 3x squared will now be minus 1x plus 21x, and then minus 7. So I've rewritten the original expression using the value I found. Now I've got my two groups. I'm going to take my first group and factor out the GCF of x. 3x squared divided by x is 3x. Negative 1x divided by x is negative 1. Now I'm going to take the second group and factor out GCF. Here the biggest factor that divides out of both of these is 7. I will use a positive 7 since that's what the lead sign says. 21x divided by 7 is 3x. That matches. Good. Negative 7 divided by 7 is negative 1. And that actually matches as well. So 3x minus 1 is one of my two factors. And the x plus 7 is my other. And again, I'm going to emphasize one more time about using the uh, calculator to check that answer. I'm going to go ahead and type in the first block what my original expression is. And even when your leading coefficient is a number other than 1, this still works. Now, I can, I can clearly see my two zeros here. I'm going to tap in my linear factors of x plus 7. That hit at one of them. Good. And my other linear factor is 3x minus 1. And that hit at the other 0 right here at point 0.3 repeating. All right, everything's looking good here. That was my final answer.